I always appreciate your presence on my lives here, whereby I come here to shed a light uh, to the plight of the people of the Republic of Uganda. It is not by my will, it is the will of the Most High that impels me to speak the words which are supposed to be spoken. So, dear brothers and sisters, it is the same Lord, the same God Almighty, the immutable Father, who is reigning supreme above the 12 constellation of the firmament, dear brothers and sisters. It is the same Lord by his ineffable thoughts, all the actual rotation and the orbital revolution, the revolution of the earth where we are fixed into the cosmos by his ineffable glory thus we come here and we vibrate you know in a, a, a in a, a cosmic synthesized vacuum as we all know that god permits each and everything so dear brothers and sisters if we can reflect a little bit to the words of a, a great mathematician and an inventor by the words of uh, nicole tesla he said that his head no, he was asked in an interview so the, the the interviewer was curious how he come up with those inventions you know how did he attain that knowledge to bring about things which fascinates human the human race uh, in his uh, intuitiveness he responded and said that my head it is just a receiver but there is a place where we receive knowledge and that place he has not been able to penetrate those boundaries to reach in the place where knowledge it is drawn from or where knowledge it is attainable so dear brothers and sisters the more we embrace god almighty the more he permits us you know the concentration and we think of things that perplex our minds the things that gives us curiosity so god almighty you know he is the only way he is the only way that we can attain all that we're looking for dear brothers and sisters i hope you are all doing all right it is a beautiful wednesday afternoon beautiful wednesday afternoon the third of april year 2024 dear brothers and sisters on the african continent it is bob the mechanic with a continuation of demanding the unconditional release of all political prisoners we are demanding the unconditional release of all political prisoners in uganda it is the reason why we come here to remind the people of africa that the people of uganda are under siege they are still being subjugated by dictator Museveni. remember dear brothers and sisters the people of uganda took to the polls you know three years ago and they elected his excellency robert chagulanyi sentamu you know to be the leader the the, the the president and his led administration to deliver the services which are the people with the services the people of uganda are yearning for so brothers and sisters on the african continent it should be born in your minds you should be reminded all the time that we are still demanding for what is rightfully ours we are still informing you that Museveni continues to abduct innocent citizens of uganda Museveni continues to kidnap citizens of uganda Museveni continue to administer you know enforced immunization within the society of uganda and to our surprise all the elites have chosen silence as opposed to come and scrutinize what kind of substances are being injected in the infants of uganda you, you understand these are the things that we come here to raise you understand so that the people of africa must be aware of what is taking place in uganda since we are living in a global village so that which you know torments the people on the other side of the border it can easily be transported into your borders where you think that you are safe so dear brothers and sisters matters of leadership are contagious in nature and the you know the, the constitutions which permits the citizens to raise their voices when they are not contented in any given circumstance it is the values those are the values we are striving so very much so that they can prevail in Uganda pertaining matters of leadership. So dear brothers and sisters on the African continent, we thank you very much for having kept a, an eye on Uganda, for having raised your voices. We, we hear 
that dictator Yoweri Museven he is not seated in a very comfortable way. Museven he is seated on a thorny seat, having stole the, the 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 chair that did not belong to him. He is on a thorny seat. He is standing in a stolen seat. So, dear brothers and sisters on the African continent, continue that pressure. It is working, and we are slowly getting closer to attain what we will for on 14th January year 2021. So, dear brothers and sisters bob the mechanic once again bob the mechanic once again i hope you i hope you're all doing all right you know so dear brothers and sisters this afternoon i captured i captioned my presentation as deductive inductive system of reasoning deductive inductive system of reasoning so dear brothers and sisters before i delve into that one let, allow me to deduct or to reflect from the words of a great mathematician and a, 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 an astronomer a philosopher by the names of Aristotle. Aristotle, he is the man who stated that in his science or in his metaphysics dear brothers and sisters you remember uh, metaphysics it is a branch of philosophy which deals with abstract subjects such as cosmology theology and the nature of being so aristotle in his in unity he classified you know philosophy into two categories he said that he, there is a practical philosophy and there is a theoretical philosophy. So he assigned politics and ethics into practical philosophy. So our focus today it is going to be on practical philosophy, which houses the ethics and and the ethics and uh, politics. You understand? So the metaphysics of Aristotle starts with these words all men naturally desire to know to satisfy this common urge the unfolding human intellect has explored the extremities of imaginable space without and the extremities of imaginable self within seeking to estimate the relationship between the one and the all. Nature and the groundwork of nature, the groundwork of nature, the effect and the cause, the mind and the source of the mind, the spirit and the substance of the spirit. So dear brothers and sisters, those are the words that Aristotle started with in his metaphysics. He said that all men naturally desire to know, to satisfy this common urge of the unfolding human intellect has explored the extremities of imaginable self without and the extremities of imaginable self within. Seeking to understand the difference between the one and the all the effect and the cause nature and the groundwork of nature the mind and the source of the mind the spirit and the substance of the spirit so dear brothers and sisters i'm referring to aristotle because he said that all men naturally desire to know so i have this inner urge the peculiar inner urge and it was spurred oh it was lifted by the message which was issued by the inter-religious council in uganda why am i saying the inter-religious council in uganda the message they delivered to the congregants while celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it was one. We listened to it in different cathedrals. It was promulgated 
and it was emphasized by our spiritual leaders those are the, the, the religious leaders and it's the same message which has been which has been delivered by our cultural leaders we see according to my opinion and my interpretation of the message our colleagues men delivered it to us during easter there is a sense of cohesion because this message sounded exactly the same and one may wonder how did they come up with the same message when these domination denominations are different so they are convincing us that if people make mistakes they can be forgiven and we move on but we see that the individuals who are being advocated for these are the individuals who continues to fire provocative shots in the wounds which has not healed yet so i am a little bit not convinced by the message that that message was intended to shepherd the flocks of god almighty by the priests by the men in cap and gown i doubt whether this message was intended for the well-being of the children of uganda because this message it came at a critical juncture where the general public the general public had placed any individual under probation you understand this individual was caught ready-handed and he confessed for having committed a crime that crime it is a crime of bribery so now religious leaders comes out with a message that keeps our minds a little bit down to show those leaders that they haven't showed any remorsefulness towards the public but they continue to speak in their conventional way as if they haven't committed any crime and the religious leaders keeps on amplifying the words that comes forth from the culprit so there is a conflict of interest in this message of easter so pop the mechanic right here i would like to pose a question with relation to what we've just heard the words of aristotle is that all men naturally desire to know so the religious leaders before this incident of corruption of which Mathar Simpuga he is the topic Anita Among she is the topic and their lady clique of the so-called Buganda caucus so brothers and sisters these religious leaders do they want us to believe that all heinousness which have been committed ever since dictator Museveni captured the power are not worthy to be deliberated upon or are not worthy to be you know reminded their congregants that the people are still being adapted are abducted we don't hear any message from religious leaders uganda's inter-religious council we don't hear any message a strong message to, to the state to tell dictator Museven that stop abducting our congregants these are part of our flock the people whom you abduct are part of the flock we are shepherding we don't hear anything of that sort what we hear it is this message which is intended to save Matthias Simpuga from being held accountable for the crimes he committed and accepted you understand so we are saying that all the crimes that Museven is keeps on committing are they things that we can overlook and we turn a blind eye over them 
and we should concentrate on a message of forgiveness yes we agree because we are all fallible nobody is perfect but the man has not shown any remorse towards the crime he committed he continues philosophically to fire provocative shots during easter mass mr matthias impuga was granted a platform in a cathedral an iconic and symbolic cathedral of kitovu kitovu cathedral the lady our lady of solo kitovu cathedral matthias simpuga was granted a time to speak before the congregants well knowing that the general public pressed placed matthias simpuga under probation and the the the, 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 the political party of which he claims to be a part had given him a punishment so i'm asking religious leaders are you trying to defy the decision which was reached upon by the political party that employs matthias simpuga or oh, you think that the decision or the demand of the people of uganda it is irrelevant and we should be pacified by the message you issued on Easter that people should forget and move on. Is that enough? Is that enough, religious leader? Really, is that enough that we should neglect our responsibility to hold a man such as Matthias Impuga, a man for the past two and a half years? while serving as the leader of opposition he was indicating that accountability and service so now we're putting we, we are putting him on the scale to see whether he meant the words he used to speak or they were just a mere you know words to confuse the minds of the people he claimed to be leading so dear brothers and sisters these religious leaders we are arguing them that they should stand on their feet and tell Mr. Museven to stop abducting the children of Uganda, which happens to be part of the flock they are shepherding in their respective congregation. We are telling Uganda's religious leaders to stand and inform Ugandans that through hiding behind the region there was a massacre there was a carnage in a place known as kanungu in the western side of uganda a couple of years ago a couple of decades ago we don't hear religious leaders reciting such incidents if they keep it if they're trying to show us that that is the past that means it is more likely to occur again because the culprits are still at large. We want to know who were those people who were burnt in Kanungu. According to CNN, they counted a thousand. We, know, we are not sure, we are not so sure whether CNN was coerced before publishing that number. If an illegitimate and the murderer state such as Museveni's can allow a number to be published that a thousand people were confirmed incinerated there or were confirmed burnt in that so-called church of Chibwetere Katalibabo, which took place in Ikanungu. There is no religious leader is reminding the young children, the 15 and below, that once, in, once upon a time, during Museveni's era, people were burnt in churches. We don't see any recitation of that one. We don't see religious leaders tell the people of Uganda that during Museveni's reign, the people, the students in Chichuampa were burnt. We don't see religious leaders reminding the people of Uganda that during Museveni's reign, the kingdom of Renzulu was besieged. 
People were captured, they were undressed, and they were paraded, and firing squad was ordered, and judgment was rendered to them. We don't see religious leaders reminding the people of Uganda and the young generation of Ugandans that Museven, during Mokola, he captured the people whom he considered to be the rebels when they had surrendered they captured them and they 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 they, they locked them into a container and they set a container ablaze according to the rules of engagement of the international law if somebody surrenders that individual must be held accountable taken to the courts of law a court martial and the punishment will be determined by the court martial but in seven he acted as a judge as well as a jury the people of mukula were incinerated in the container dear brothers and sisters we don't see religious leader in uganda reminding ugandans that during Museveni's era a lot of infants were immunized and they passed so we did not see any minister of health or a person who is in charge of national drug authority being held accountable we are still going on as we speak right now there is a rampage there is a rampant immunization of the infants of uganda and the people are complaining what kind of substance are these being injected in our little ones? We don't see religious leader raising eye blow with regard to that. They are quiet. But they, they all stood to inform the public to forgive Matthias Simpuga and his likes. We can see what they call double standards. We are interested in men who propagate the word of God. People who are advocating for equality. We have seen that Matthias Simpuga, through taxpayers' money, through Anita Monge, through Dictatorial Room 7, we can see that taxpayers' money is being used to solidify Museveni's status quo. We see that religious leaders, they are not contented with the tithe the people see, the people pay. The ten percent people pay on a on a weekly basis. They are not contented with it. They want more seven more more money from dictator room seven. When dictator room seven his son went to massacre, we are informed that secretly religious leaders and cultural leaders went and met and meet uh, Mohoska in Rugaba. In that meeting, Kanyo Rugaba asked them what is it that you want others they asked cars nice cars they did not bother to ask to tell him that we are here with you but we want you to do one thing stop abducting ugandans stop kidnapping ugandans stop all those evil plots you are making against ugandans they did not say anything so the Easter message cements what we were told. And the information we get, the elites consider it to be speculative and to be somehow propaganda. But we see that the, when the Im information is being issued by ASP Asimi Biban Politics or Teacher Lumbuye of LBS, we see that most of the security alerts they have issued 85% they have gone on target. So, religious leaders, do you think that these individuals are on the internet just to look for followers? Or oh, they are concerned global citizens. They are concerned grandchildren of Uganda who are responsible and who are concerned for the well-being of their fellow Ugandans. Thus, they decided they decided to call, to take on the mantle of exposing dictator Rome 7 we don't hear the Catholic, uh, we don't hear any religious leaders say anything this information they finally take effect and 7 kill people 
just a couple of days ago. A brigadier general was, he, he suffered a blood clot. They say he was taking a shower and he fell down. Religious leaders, how many prominent leaders are going to be slain before you wake up and ask for the post-mortem report? How, when are you going to rise and ask Moseven what is going on? What is this rampant dying, the, the mysterious death of our fellow Karigsmen? Religious leaders, I have a question. What was your interpretation when Spirian Chizitoranga was being at his burial ceremony? Museven said that he considered Spirian Chizitoranga to be like Cardinal. Who was that Cardinal? Cardinal Subuga. Yes, he said that Cyprian Chizitoranga was considered to be Cardinal Subuga. And when we reflect to the information teacher Kajubi of LOBS gave us, he said that Cyprian Chizitoranga, the late, was working his way to save Saba Sajja Kabaka Saba Taka of Buganda because he had been poisoned. And when he was seven, got the word, he knew that Cardinal Insubuga was involved in the struggle which brought him seven. And he can see that Cyprian Chizitoranga, the late bishop, was, was helping Saba Sajja Kabaka of Buganda to free, to seek medication. Thus, Museven did away with Cyprian Chizitoranga. Museven did away with Jonah Luanga, as he did with Jonah Nirumu. And the case was dropped to Idi Amin Dada. Museven has destroyed one bishop in Masaka, whose name has eluded me. He was killed because of his stance. He said that wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter whether it is being accepted by the elites or the majority. Now the elites in the religious leaders, they are trying to show us that we can only forgive and forget. The dictator in his tendencies, he does not do anything fearing of being known. He kills as he prays. So why is it that religious leaders are still passing the message in a philosophical way when the killer is killing us in the broad daylight? Won't it be good enough for the religious leader to stand on the sanctuary, on the altar, a mimbali, and tell your congregants respectively that it is time for you to demand for your freedom. Because in all known history, freedom, it is demanded. Freedom, it is taken. It is never asked for. We are asking religious leaders, why is it so hard for you to stand and tell them seven that stop killing Ugandans? The reason we come to the internet, because we see Conventionalism has become the curse of modern philosophy. When we say traditionalism, we mean those old religious organizations. They are conventionalism. They are traditionalism. In handling matters, it has become a curse and it has become detrimental for the wants of our generation. We are saying that Museven captured all mainstream media. The only place where people can receive the message of change it is through a you know, religious congregation. It is the only way the message to be instilled within the minds of those Ugandans who are a little bit gullible, who 
or those who have no access to the information of the things which are unfolding in Uganda as we speak. I saw Mr. Matthias Mpuga in Chitovu speaking the words of which Bishop Okagwa did not take time to interpret and tell the people of Masaka or ask Matthias Mpuga, what do you mean? What do you mean that you met these people on the road? What did he meant by the words he spoke? Our understanding it is not like yours. We are at a juncture where we need to understand directly. We are not equipped with the philosophical understanding. We need courageous men to tell the people directly. Because you have seen that Museven penetrated each and everything. Do you want us to believe that you are all Kabano incorporated? Religious leaders, we are asking, why is it that when Museveni's agent comes into a place or to any public place, they are given time. They are given time. Plenty of time to deceive the minds of the people of the Republic of Uganda who happens to be the congregants of whom you claim to be shepherding. But the Lord is watching you. And the Lord, the Lord will continue to instill knowledge within the awakened Ugandans to defy the message you bring before us. Religious leaders, this is the time for you to tell the congregants that for far too long we have been quiet. Religious leaders, tell the congregants, fellow Ugandans, tell them, tell us that Ugandans, it is time for you to come and demand for freedom. There is no way we can have peace when we don't have freedom. There is no way we can think perfectly when we don't have freedom because we don't have freedom of expression, of expression. I've watched a video whereby Mr. Matthias Simpuga's psychophants or Mr. Matthias Simpuga relatives have attacked the brother to the deputy spokesperson of National Unity Platform they attacked him, accusing him of abusing Matthias Simpuga. But in all the words that Sir Alex Waisom of Fumbilo speaks on mainstream media and on social network, I haven't heard uh, uh, Sir Alex Waisom of Fumbilo I mean, abusing anybody. He addressed matters with decorum. It is us who does not fall decorum. It is us who say that we shall restore decorum when we are through with them seven. Because there is no way you can act in normal circumstances. In there is no way you can act normally in abnormal circumstances. Museven himself, legitimate as he is in our political institutions, he does not fall the law. If he was falling, if he was acting within the law, Mr. Museven wouldn't be doing the things he does right now as we speak. You understand? Mr. Museven, he is a man who is shameless right now because he knows that there is no any other way he can survive to be caught into the hands of justice. So, he does all sorts of madness to make us believe that we have nothing to do about this situation. Yet we do have something to do. But you, religious leaders, have retarded the minds of your congregants. How comes you don't tell the children, religious leaders, where are you contented when a servant proposed a bill and it was passed that Native Ugandans should be stripped of their nativity. 
Were you contented? Why did you choose silence? Religious leaders for the past 30, 30, 80 years. Musafin slowly. He smuggled the tribe of Rwanda into the constitution of Uganda. You kept quiet. You kept quiet. Religious leaders. Musafin. He uplift age limit. You kept quiet. You did not issue any document. Now you are issuing a document because of your own. Are you all Kabano incorporated? Mr. Mathias Simpuga standing in the middle of the cathedral trying to show how emotional he is. That man, you are all advocating for that man, religious leaders. How many times you will keep silent for how long? If you have kept silence, when we come up with a thief and we raise a point that this individual, he works with dictator Museven, then why do you want to bring a message that pacify our minds, our minds which are yearning for change? No. Where is the relationship between the one and the all? You understand? We are saying that the all are demanding Mathias Simpuga to be held accountable. The one, the religious organization, says that everybody is capable of doing a mistake. We agree on that one. But there must be a limit and there must be consequences. Because when we look at the law of consequences, people are supposed to meet the repercussion of what they did. Masayat Nspuga was asked to resign, repent, take back the money, as simple as that. Religious leaders. Mr. Mathias, Mr. Mathias Nspuga, he keeps on taunting the people of Uganda. He keeps on speaking the words that makes us think that he's attacking our leader. Religious leaders, it is time, it is time for you to stand and tell Dictator Museveni that Dictator Yuri Museveni, even if you shoot me in the head, the truth is the truth and the fact is the fact. Museveni, you are a killer. When are you going to stop to kill? Whether in private or in a public or in public, tell Museveni, tell Museveni. Religious leader, we've grown old enough to understand that our thoughts, our thoughts, it is the only way we serve the Lord. We don't serve the Lord through the gowns. No, we serve the Lord by our minds. So what is the source of your mind? What is the source of your mind? What are the substance of your spirit? Can't you search the causation of the effect that torments the people of the Republic of Uganda? You want us to believe that you don't know what is retarding Uganda in any given aspect? Religious leaders. For all the years that you've eaten Christmas, you don't know the causation of the subjugation of the people of the Republic of Uganda. You want us to believe that you are not concerned with political matters. What is religion? What is religion? Any civil servant prior to assume any given office, they hoist the Bible, that is the Holy Scripture. The Bible that houses the Ten Commandments, of which we all believe now. How comes that you are quiet when these politicians cannot assume office without the Holy Scriptures? Be it a Quran or a Bible. So how comes that you are quiet? When you are the custodian of the word of God.
religious leaders stand on the side of the people religious leaders stand on the side of the people Spirian Chizito Luanga when he was given some kind of state funeral there in Kololo Museven he grabbed a flower a bouquet or a wreath to take it to the coffin but the national flag slided off it was a mystic that made us all believe that Museven killed this man and the man have refused Museven to put a flower on his coffin religious leaders you never interpreted that either you did and you decide to keep silent we saw it with our own eyes it is no longer mystic because we know the dead are not entirely dead it is only the flesh that expires but the mind the spirit and the soul are still much much alive religious leaders please stand with the people of the republic of uganda speak to power with your words because it is the right thing to do Museven, he has no legitimacy anymore Museven, he has no legitimacy anymore religious leaders we listen to the information being brought to us by those two individuals asp asime bible and politics and teacher kajubi rumbuye of lbs as we speak right now religious leaders we were informed that the current slain military man who was commanding the uganda air force he was coerced in the meeting by the generals and he was instructed or he was briefed on a suicide mission they wanted to slain to sacrifice a national aircraft and to sacrifice the paratroopers so that Museveni's son, they can pretend like there is a, 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 a coup. You understand? They wanted to organize a coup. So when this brigadier refused to execute that, he was poisoned. And now he is being added to the victims of blood clot. Religious leaders are quiet. Religious leaders are quiet in Uganda. Religious leaders are quiet in Uganda. All of them. All of them. They are all quiet. We can count many prominent leaders who have fallen victim on a blood clot. Religious leaders, we are not going to be quiet. Why are you pretending to be shepherding the flock of the Most High? But in real sense, you executing the dictates of a murderer that is dictator Yoweri Museven. Religious leaders, stick to the word of the Most High. Stick to the words of God. Tell Museven that enough is enough. Tell Museven that the people of Uganda know exactly what you are doing that the people of uganda are on the verge of wielding weapons to confront you militarily religious leader tell them seven that this is the time we have to inform the people of uganda to come and demand for their for their freedom this is the time religious leaders you no longer need to meet him seven in private because whatever him seven does against the people of uganda he does it in general public we don't need any closed meetings these are public matters the offices we are complaining about are public offices we need religious leaders we need religious leaders we need religious leaders my brother do not bother to 
make a request. Me, I'm not an analyst. I'm just a foot soldier who come to air out my thoughts and to convey a message of revelation and to convey a message of standing up to mobilize fellow Ugandans to speak more because we are preparing ourselves for a military confrontation. When the push comes to swerve, we are not ruling that one out. We are still in a digital confrontation towards dictator number seven. But this is a preparation of our souls, mind, and spirit for a military confrontation because according to the things that are going, it seems to be inevitable. So please do not call me. I am not an analyst. So religious leaders, we are informing you, we are informing you that this time around, either with you or with, without you, we are rebellating Uganda. But stop confusing, giving a platform to a culprit, a man who has become a society misfit. You give him a platform to legitimize his wrongdoing. We saw, I saw Matha Simpuga in Chitov Cathedral. Our Lady of Solo, Chitov Cathedral, where Father Angobia is sleeping. Father Angobia, he was a righteous man. There is no way you can bring Mathias Simpuga, any, any clean spirit. A spirit which is devilish. That is Mathias Simpuga. Mr. Mathias Simpuga, the thing is, your eloquence won't amount to anything. Your fellow conventional politician said it by himself that if an individual offer himself to be bought, that individual's knowledge sees to matter to the public. Mathasim Puga, you are in that category. Your intelligence does not matter anymore pertaining matters of leadership because you have no moral authority to talk about accountability and services while allocating yourself huge sums of money. Mathias Simpuga, Mathias Simpuga, we are still demanding the unconditional release of all political prisoners. Mathias Simpuga, the chairman for Uganda Human Rights Commission came out and he attested how you were coercing her that you needed to profit from the 18 missing Ugandans. And you wanted her and you proposed and you suggested, you suggested measures to be utilized in order to extract money from the United Nations. Mr. Mathias Simpuga, all of these are on public domain. Mr. Mathias Simpuga, you came and you taunted us how wealthy, how wealthy you are. You are a filthy rich. We are not concerned, Mr. Matthias Mpuga. It was very, very simple. We demanded resignation, apology, and to refund the money you stole. That is all we wanted. We didn't want to know how wealthy you are, how rich you are, what you possess, with regards to earthly possessions. We did not want to know anything of that sort. What we wanted, it was to resign because you were caught in the wrong side of leadership. So Mr. Mathias Simpuga, sir, all that you do right now, whatever you do right now, won't amount to anything because the people of Uganda, are you good? The people of Uganda are well awakened and they are holding their leaders accountable. Mr. Matthias Simpuga. Mr. Matthias Simpuga. Mr. Charles Peter Maiga. Mr. Charles Peter Maiga. The general public is complaining against Anita Among. A woman who has made 
the house of legislature into a market to exchange money. You brought that woman. When the leader of opposition, Joel Senyon, came to Bulange to buy the jerseys or the kit. You prepared our minds and you informed us that Kabaka embraces each and everyone. Do not be surprised when you see any RM parliamentarians come to Bulange. Little did we know that you knew Mathias Simpuga is bringing Anita Among. Thomas Tebwa, a man who was caught on camera whipping a civil servant, a man who went to read a meter, electric meter. This is the man who deputized the Museveni enforced speaker. Thomas Taewa, a man who was caught on camera beating a civil servant who was doing his job because he is affiliated to the evil family of dictator Museveni. Right now as we speak, he is the deputy speaker of the parliament of the Republic of Uganda. Anita Among was caught stealing iron sheets which were meant for the people of Karamoja. She is the speaker of the parliament of Uganda. Anita Among, Mathias Simpuga and four other commissioners of the National Resistance Movement, they were caught stealing 1.7 billion shillings and they allocated sums of money by themselves. This is the person that presides over a house where laws are made. Fellow Ugandans, fellow Ugandans, we have to rise to the occasion. There is no way we can allow our state to become a failed state before our own eyes. No, that is impossible. My brothers and sisters, these religious leaders, they earn a lot in our subjugation. They have a mission to pacify your desire. They have a mission to keep you calm. They have a mission to tell you that all our sufferings should be pressed in prayers without action. Whereas Apostle Paul reminded those who went for him to study that faith should be mingled with sweat. Dear brothers and sisters, we pray to the Most High. But it is the same most tie that gives us energy to wake up in the morning, that is, gives us knowledge to think that we are not supposed to be ruled over, we are supposed to be led. Religious leaders are trying to show us that we shall not raise our voices, that we should not ask these questions. During Easter Mass, I went to a church. And our Father in Christ, in his sermons, reminded the congregants of which I was a part. And he said that, Children of the Most High, do not consider yourself as smart, but do not be taken for granted. Ask questions. That is the message we received because of the resurrected being. The people of Uganda, we have been betrayed by Charles Peter Maiga. We have been betrayed by the Buganda caucus, those parliamentarians. Those parliamentarians who constitute the so-called Buganda caucus. No, this is a caucus which is meant for the destruction of Buganda. Buganda destructive caucus. It is no longer Buganda caucus advocating for Buganda values. No, Buganda values destructive caucus. That is the, those are the guys led by Mwanga Chivumbi. And all the missions and all the tenants and all the, 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 the conducts, the way they conduct their things are well orchestrated by Dictator Rumu 7, delivered to Charles Peter Maiga through Mathias Simpuga and executed by those people. 
These are individuals who have refused to resign. And the, 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 the religious leaders keep on telling us that we should come down. The man is fighting with a two-edged sword. With a double-edged sword. You telling us to put our guards down? No. We continue to speak. We continue to expose Dictatorium 7 to the world to know how insidious he is. Dear brothers and sisters, on the African continent, the Museveni we are complaining against, this is the man. When the people of Tanzania saw that the Rwandan natives are accumulating in their country, they asked Rwanda that we need to repatriate these Rwandan nationals to, to their homeland. Mr. Kagame rejected. I find it so very difficult when we are researching, when we are searching for the causation of the subjugation and the political turmoil and the political instability and the regional political instability in Uganda and East Africa as, as a whole. I find it so hard to exclude Mr. Paulo Kagame, the president of Rwanda. Why? Because Mr. Paulo Kagame was a refugee in Uganda. And Mr. Paulo Kagame, I heard him claiming that he owns things in Uganda. Now, when the people of Tanzania, I'm not so sure whether it was Jakaya Kikwete or the late Magufuli, who expelled those Rwandese to go back to Rwanda, Mr. Kagame rejected them and Mr. Museven said, bring them to Uganda. So he took them to Kasese. When the king of that region or that area asked, who are these immigrants? Where are they coming from? Mr. Museven responded with a brutality that claimed hundreds and hundreds of innocent children. And the palace of Omsinga was besieged just because of asking who are these individuals. Dear brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters, Mr. Museven, Mr. Museven, he is not alone. He is not subjugating us alone by himself. The people of East Africa, we are having a problem. We are all children of Africa. We are all children of Africa. We are sons and daughters of Africa. We have a lot in common, dear brothers and sisters. But Uganda, it is under conflict. And these conflicts are made by two individuals. This is a fact are made by two individuals. Mr. Museven plans and Mr. Kagame. Mr. Kagame, I cannot refrain to speak your name. Mr. Kagame, according to Henry Gombia, who was the BBC correspondent 1987, while at UNN, online TV. He informed the people of Uganda and the world as a whole that nearly during the assassination of Dr. Andrew Rutankome Kaira, Mr. Kagame led the squad which committed the assassination. Mr. Kagame, Mr. Kagame by then, he was the head of MDI, the equivalent to CMI of today time. So you can see is that when we say that 50% of the annual budget of Uganda develops Rwanda, we have a basis of why we say that. When we say that there is a concerted effort that all institutions in Uganda to be rendered useless, there is a concerted effort. As we speak in Rwanda, there is Makerere University. In Rwanda, there is Intale High School. In Rwanda, there is Namagunga, there is Namasagali. These, the, these were prominent schools that could produce 
class children. These were class schools, schools of real substance. But M7 has rendered them worthless because he appointed his wife as the Minister of Education. And the Constitution states that any person to assume any public office, that person should be of a Form 6 equivalent of education, which Mrs. Museven, who happens to be Janet Kaguta Museven, a.k.a. Mama Assassin, does not have that one. So, dear brothers and sisters, religious leaders are quiet. They did not say anything that Mr. Museven, it won't paint a good picture if you appoint somebody who does not qualify for the office. Religious leaders kept quiet. The education system is dead. The schools which used to belong to the Catholic Church are being confiscated. Museven enforced his own children or his own uh, psychophants into those institutions. As we speak right now, Budo, King's College Budo, they say that anyone to be admit or to be admit or given a place there, they have to inquire from the Ministry of Education. Dear brothers and sisters, religious leaders are quiet. Religious leaders are quiet. We were informed that Uganda's wildlife are being taken to Rwanda by force. Religious leaders, they did not pay a heed. All the gorillas, all the lions, all the wildlife in Uganda are being taken to Rwanda to develop this to Rwanda narrative. Religious leaders are quiet. The people of Uganda, the people of Uganda, the people of Acholi, the people of Ankole, the people of Sebei, the people of uh, Uganda as a whole, they have elites. Those elites, those influential people, those are the one who seven pick and make their stomach big. And they feel like they are contented, not knowing that if Museven take another year, he is planning for their demise. So to, to bring another leader who will become influential, Museven has already, he has a plan already. We have been informing you of an insidious group known as Kabano. Dear brothers and sisters of the Rwandi origin, we have grown up together. We have lived in Uganda together. But this system of being with a coveted mission to destroy your fellow Ugandans because you were indoctrinated by your seven that we need to take over this country that system won't work dear brothers and sisters of Rwandi origin we are all Ugandans do not consider yourself a Rwandi when you were born in Uganda if a radical parent wants to indoctrinate that in you resist it and say no this is a unified Africa. This is a unified, you know, world. This is what we say. That in seven, none, no one has ever segregated your people. Stop indoctrinating young people. Mr. Museven, religious leaders, say something. Speak up. Stop speaking to people in a proverbial way. It takes long to understand. The Lord has given us a chance to expose Dictator Room 7. Dictator Room 7, he is jittery. All the foundation of his dictatorship. They are shaky. We are not waiting for you to join the people of Uganda to lead them. To lead them. In your gowns and cap, lead us, religious leaders. The political side have done their job. They have exposed them seven. They have informed the Ugandans. 
They have awakened the Ugandans national unity platform, so to speak. That is the only political party that has awakened the eyes of the people of the Republic of Uganda and told them that no one can enslave you without your consent. You understand? So religious leaders join the movement of people power and will remove dictatorial seven so that you can serve so that you can shepherd God's flock in the amicable peace do not wait the churches to be blown off because if you don't speak up the next thing it is going to be a civil war that is imminent that is inevitable if you religious leaders do not speak in the interests of the general public which happens to be your congregants religious leaders all traders entrepreneurs business owners industrialists uganda national natives are being killed are being driven out of business before your own eyes but you are quiet all the prices of the commodities are becoming higher they are unbearable you are quiet Museveni dismantled all the parastatal entities of the government. You kept quiet. Museven sold all the coffee marketing processing machines to Rwanda. Rwanda, right now, he is selling coffee on the international market. The things which were done by Idi Amin Dada, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul and rise in glory. A man a just man who worked for the people of Uganda. He was a nationalist. He informed us that if you search, I'm the only president of the world who does not own a foreign account. That man whom seven denied a decent burial, he is still buried in a piece of hall in Saudi Arabia there. Mr. Museven, Mr. Museven, we are telling you that this Charles Peter Maiga and his led group, that clique, that murderous clique, they won't do nothing. We are telling you that you cannot intimidate the awakened Ugandans. We are mobilizing each other. The people of East Africa, East African community, the people of Tanzania, the people of Kenya, we are brothers keeper. We were informed that Mr. Seven and Mr. Ruto, they reached an agreement that each and every Ugandan who jets on Kenyatta International Airport should be handed over to the authority of Uganda, which has got a base in Kenya. We are being informed that Mr. Seven he feels intimidated and he wanted to build a university bearing his name he could not build in uganda he was allocated a place in kenya in a place called kakamega and i think the construction is ongoing mr seven being shame, so shameless he could not build any schools in uganda he went to tanzania and built schools there the people of East Africa. Walimu Walimupa nyumba, walimupa vikulaje, vya kila aina, walimupa vya vyote yani. Lakini ya mawe gauka, na nawe mafa, ametuchukua takataka yani. Sasa tunasema, etabidi tuyungane mkono wandugu, sisi watu wa Uganda, tumeshituka, tumenyanyua voice zetu. Etabidi tuyungane mikono 
Itabidi tuyungane mikono tunagombana na wakorofi walivamia vituo vyetu vyote vya viongozi wa ndugu wa mashariki wanatuua tukijaribu kuingia nyumbani wapo na wa agent wabo mpakani yani washikaje wengi wameshikwa mashariki wameuliwa Amuseme ati sisi hatuwezi kugombana tunaweza kugombana lakini huyo Museve na ma agent kwenye mipaka Busia pale maraba pale Mutukula ana ma agent pale So watu wa mashariki itabidi tiungane mikono bana tunaomba mshada tunaomba mshada Mutupe njia mutupe njia bana Uyo Mseveni ndoto zake ni mbaya kwa watu wa mashariki wote. Ujumura kwa ujumura ndoto za Mseveni ni mbaya kwa watu wa mashariki wote. Nakwambia ndugu labula amjaona mambo ayo lakini wa Kenya wa Kenya mtaona. Nafikiri wa Tanzania Mseveni ameshapanua vituo vyenu vya viongozi. Na Kenya We are informed that during the election of His Excellency Samuel Ruto, Museven influenced the entire system. Museven invested a lot of millions and millions of dollars into the election of Kenya, setting a mission that he is conquering East Africa. And his fight he is sure that he has got Kenya he has got Tanzania Mama suruhu Mama suruhu huyu mzee huyo ni muwaje atujajua kabisa Nani alimuua huyo magufuri huyo raisi huyo raisi Tunaangalia mambo tunaangalia mambo lakini sisi Tumenyanyuka yani tunataka inchi yetu mzee Museveni tunakwambia bila wasiwasi wala nini tunataka inchi yetu tunataka inchi yetu wewe Museveni ni mkimbizi nchini humo Uganda hiyo inajulikana hiyo inajulikana wewe ni mkimbizi